to us more about this concept of political competence. That's something you write a lot about and um, that you say is very important and often ignored. What's, right. What is political competence and how does it affect leadership? There's always a knee-jerk reaction. Well, I'm not political. Uh, well, can we just, <laughs> let, let's agree something. Politics need not be spelled with a big P. It can be spelled with a right. small P. <laughs> so I don't want to say that, you know, me, trying to get out of taking the garbage downstairs in the buildings of political act, but it's a, everything, is political, everything has some elements. The politics is a small p. What are organizations about? You know, embedded in organizations, there's limited resources. There are challenges. You need to create groups. You need to create coalitions. You need to win people over. You need to move an agenda. That means you've got to understand who you need in your corner. Do you need the HR department for this ideas? Do I need the R&D group? Do I need the group from Bangalore to do this? Do I need the group from Raleigh to do this? Who do I need? Understanding that notion, that's what I mean. How do I persuade people? Right. How do I win them over? How do I create the coalitions? Which, who do I speak to first? Who shouldn't I speak to first? Who's my ally? Who's my potential resistance? You know, and then it's hard. You know, there's also a notion of trying, where are other people coming from? There's a difference. And, and, and I think an important difference between saying political and saying the word Machiavellian. Hmm. I believe that in an organization, the first assumption I make is that you're acting as a leader on behalf of the collective good. If you're not acting part of the collective good, I'm not interested in talking to you in the first place, okay? Then you, wow. you, you've got a problem. Yeah. If you're not acting, we all, are, when I act on behalf of an organization, I act in true belief what I think is good for the organization. Mm -hmm. Within that framework, I may be very political. So, I mean, if you think about it, about leadership, for example, the movie Selma is out, people are watching this, and now we're thinking of the elections. What is it we want from all these? You know, people always think that, Oh, they're charismatic. Yeah, but you know what? The really smart leaders in this world are also the ones that are politically smart about moving an agenda. Mm -hmm. It isn't charisma that moved ideas. It isn't charisma that changes countries. It is the hard work behind it. Mm -hmm. It is the hard work of creating relationships. It's that right. type of thing. And that is true in any organization. It's certainly true in our own history. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King is actually a, a superb example. Mm -hmm. example. We get seduced quickly by charisma. Uh, but if you think of a leader like Martin Luther King, you can't help but also appreciate his micro-political brilliance. Mm. Martin Luther King understood if relationship with Johnson, his relationship with other groups, right. he understood how to keep a coalition together. He understood how to sustain momentum. He was charismatic. But do you folks think that that's all he did? That's what he, he spent all his time going around giving speeches? No. Charisma may have opened the door, his ability to articulate, you know, but behind that was a man that was brilliant yeah. in creating coalitions and moving agendas. I have no doubt, I have no, if Martin Luther King was a CEO, God willing, was alive today, was a CEO of any corporation, I would be the first one to invest.